And now, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. The Girl in the Powder Blue Jag. Written for Suspense by Walter Black. in my life. The more I sweep it, the more I stir up. Oh, that's the trouble with these summer places. By the time you get them clean, it's time to shut up and leave. Oh, darn. Be right there. I said I was coming. Now, what's up? What's the matter, miss? Please, can I come in? Well, sure. What happened? You had an accident or something? Oh, I... I, I cracked up my car just down the road. There's a big wall. The beach wall, yeah. Well, I guess I must have been going too fast. The next thing I knew, I'd hit it. I, I, I must have blacked out for a minute. You got a family doctor you want me to call? Oh, I, I don't know. What? I don't even know who I am. <laughs> How's the bed, hon? Oh, it's fine, thank you, Mrs. Sims. Now, you call me Claire. Everybody else does. Claire. That's better. The man at the police station said he'd bring a doctor with him. I, I feel so lost, not even knowing my own name. But you do. It's Kendall Endicott. Kind of a nice, uh, out of the ordinary name, too. But how do I know it's mine? A checkbook with a name printed on it? I could have stolen it. Oh, you're not the type, hon. What type am I? I don't know anything about myself. Well, take it from me, hon. You're just not the type. Besides, that uh, car you were driving, that's a Jaguar. Yeah, don't buy those for cigarette coupons. Uh, incidentally, uh, you're lucky. All you need is a new front grill. Thank goodness, that must be the police. Now, no more worrying, hon. We'll find out all about you now. I'll check with you again tomorrow, Miss Endicott, and don't you worry. You do just like the doctor said. Just get plenty of rest. Find out anything, Sergeant Hadley? Just what you already told me, ma'am. What'd the doctor say? He wouldn't tell me anything. He says it looks like amnesia. Gee, I feel so sorry for her. Funny first name she's got, Kendall. Ever know a girl by that name before? No. Me either. Can I use your phone? Oh, go right ahead. I got a hunch. I don't know if it's worth anything, but it doesn't cost anything. Hello, Standard? Let me have the editor, Mr. Jameson, please. He's a friend of mine. I've done him a few favors. Mm. Hello, Mr. Jameson. This is Sam Hadley at headquarters. Well, fine, thanks. You? Swell. Listen, Mr. Jameson, you know more about this town than anybody else. You ever meet anyone named Kendall Endicott? A girl? K, like in Kansas City. Yeah, a double L. Really? Well, yeah, sure, sure. I I'll hang on. Now we're getting somewhere. You know who she is? Well, not exactly, but he says the name rings a bell. He, he's going to check their morgue. The morgue? Newspaper morgue, lady, where they keep their records. Oh. Well, for a minute, I thought... Yeah, I know what you thought. Uh, can I uh, get you some uh, tea or coffee? Oh, don't bother. Well, how about something a little uh, stronger? I think maybe I could find something. Uh, I'm on duty, Mrs. Sims. Oh, sure. But what harm could one little snort do? Uh, thanks. Any... Uh, hello? Yes, Mr. Jameson. No kidding. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Thanks a lot. You've been a lifesaver. I'll drop by and give you the whole story. Right, so long. What do you say? Plenty. You know who your guest is, lady? Kendall Endicott, heiress to a couple of million bucks. <laughs> Yeah.
In just a moment, we will return for the second act of... Suspense. Thirsty people everywhere prefer ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. And because it's light, it refreshes without filling. Charlie, be sociable. I am, Kay. Pepsi is a favorite of thirsty people from Maine to Hawaii, from Alaska to Florida. Charlie. It's perfect for parties or picnics. So serve Pepsi to your guests. That's helpful. But... This is the sociable part. Keep plenty of Pepsi ice cold and ready. Remember, it goes fast because everybody likes Pepsi. Singing still sounds more inviting. May I? Be sociable. Look smart. Keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink. Refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and dare and dare. Be sociable. Have a Pepsi. But singing doesn't say, pick up an extra carton of Pepsi today. Better yet, get a case. You do that. You, Sergeant Hadley? That's me. Who are you? Clay Endicott, Sergeant. And I've never been so glad to see anyone in my life. What'd you say you're... Endicott? That's right. Kendall's husband. I just heard about it on the radio in my hotel room. I just got to town two hours ago. The broadcast didn't give any details just to contact you. Now, where is she? How is she? Can I see her right away, please? Sure, sure. She's over on Cliffside Drive, Summer Colony, the other side of town. I'll take you over in a squad car. You can fill me in on some details on the way over. Sure is, honey, and do I have a surprise for you. Look who's here, hon. Oh, oh, you're the policeman, aren't you? Uh, Sergeant... Hadley, ma'am. How are you feeling? All right, thank you. But look who else is here, Kendall. Uh, I, uh, I don't know what you mean. Your husband. My husband? Oh, Candy, baby, oh, darling, I'll never forgive myself for staying that extra day in San Francisco. I, I should have been with you. You see, Sergeant, it's the first time I let her take the jag out alone. It's an awful lot of car for a beginner to handle. Yeah, uh, Miss, I mean Mrs. Endicott. Don't you recognize him? No. Honey, it's me, Clay. You have to remember, darling. You don't just wipe out three years like that. Now think, darling... You were to meet me at 3.30 today here in town at the Waltham Hotel. We were going to the real estate office together. Now, please, darling, try to remember. Well, I am. I, I, well, I'm sorry, but I, I can't. Oh, no, no. I can't. <laughs> Sergeant. Yeah? Will it be all right if I talk to her a little while, alone? I won't be long. Up to her. Darling? All right. Maybe if I talk about us, some of it will come back, darling. Now, we got back from Europe in April. Oh, no, I guess I'd better start. Gee, such a pity her not recognizing him. How'd you run into him, Sergeant? Other way around. He heard the five o'clock bulletin on the radio. Well, what are they doing here, anyway? I, I mean, he said something about San Francisco. Mm, he says they came down to buy the old Murchison estate. Oh, what's that? Big place with its own private beach down past the yacht club. Oh, yeah, I've seen it from the road. Gee. I wonder how come she came down ahead of him. Well, he says there's a kind of deadline on the property. They wanted to get their bid in first. Oh, I uh, didn't even know she was married. Oh, yeah, that checks out. She's really rich, isn't she? So they tell me. That uh, Mr. Endicott, he's kind of cute. Smart, too. It takes brains to marry money like she's got. Oh, Sergeant, they could be in love. Didn't say they weren't. Uh, speaking of husbands, where's yours? Didn't you both come down for a vacation? We did. It just so happens that Joe's idea of a vacation is to watch baseball on TV in some nice dim bar with a cold bottle of beer in front of him. He could have done that back in Redwood City, but oh no, he's got to save up all year to go somewhere else to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You still here, Sergeant? Thought you might want to lift back to town. That's very kind of you, but uh, Mrs. Sims, would it be too much of an imposition if I stayed here with my wife? Stayed here? I can sleep on the couch right here. 
Naturally, I'd pay you for your trouble. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Why should you be imposed on for nothing? It's only that my wife feels at home here. I'd rather not move her unless I had oh, to. Oh, he doesn't, does he, Sergeant? Not up to me, up to you. It's fine with me, Mr. Endicott. Really, it is. And I know it'll be a real comfort to... Ca- uh, Mrs. Endicott. I understand the doctor's returning in the morning. If she's not better then, he can probably recommend a good private nursing home. Well, looks like it's settled. I certainly appreciate all you've done, Sergeant. Mrs. Sims, I'll uh, check in tomorrow morning. All right, Sergeant. Bye. Well. I would say so, my dear Mrs. Sims. I would say very well indeed. You can cut the act now. What about her? I'll sell her. It'll take time, but I'll sell her. I don't trust that cop. We have one thing in our favor, sweetie pie. Time. It's after six o'clock. Offices are closed. By the time the worthy sergeant can check more closely into my story, and he's going to, our little pigeon will be plucked and we'll be long gone. How far have you got? To the point where even if she doesn't remember me, she's willing to take my word that I'm her dearly beloved. You bring up the check? Sweetie Pie, I know this was all your idea, but you can certainly trust me to follow orders. Naturally, I mentioned the check. Casually. I told her we had only until tomorrow morning to close the deal with a down payment of 40000 Otherwise, the real estate broker has another offer he's obligated to honor. What'd she say? Nothing. I'll bring it up again when I take her supper tray in. You? Obviously, sweetie pie. Who else but her adoring spouse? Don't worry, we'll get the money. How suspicious you think that cop is? Uh, suspicion is a congenital weakness of all cops. I don't think he actively suspects me, and after all, my story was quite plausible. Thanks to me. I doff my hat, my dear, thanks to you. Like I always said, you've got to be prepared to grab your chance when it comes, because it goes by real fast, and may never come again. Spoken like the true philosopher you are, my love. Uh, I wonder... You wonder what? What it feels like to be really married to two million dollars. You keep your mind on the job. You're already married. And don't you forget who to. How could I, sweetie pie? You never give me a chance. Enjoy your breakfast, my dear. It was all right. I wasn't very hungry. You have to keep up our strength, don't we, darling? Clay, will I regain my memory? Of course, Candy. Oh, it may take a little time, but what difference does that make? What are a few days or even a week or two as long as I'm around to take care of you? Please be patient with me. Oh, darling, how could I be anything else? All I care about is your getting well. Tell me more about us. Where were we married? Believe it or not, at the American Embassy in London. London? Mm Mm-hmm. The ambassador himself married us. And you stood right there in front of him in your stocking feet. Oh, I didn't. You sure did. Uh, Later, you told me why. For good luck. Good luck? Uh Uh-huh. You told me that as a little girl, whenever you wished very hard for something, you always took your shoes off and squinted up your face and turned around twice. Well, did I squint up my face? You sure did. But I didn't turn around twice, did I? Only because I stopped you. (laughs) (laughs) Darling, let me tell you, as hard as you were wishing, I was wishing even harder for our happiness, our life together. Oh, Clay. Oh, my love. Oh, before I forget it, Kendi, I'd better take the check now. Is the house really worth that much? It's a steal, darling. Believe me. Uh, Here, make it out to cash. I figured if I walk in waving a lot of greenbacks at the broker, he might come down in price a little. Nothing like a long look at real paper money to soften a man. Oh, here, use my pen, Candy. You won't be gone long, will you, Clay? Only long enough to transact our business, honey. It's funny. I've only just met you. What I mean. I know what you mean. And already I feel as if I'd known you for years. Hurry back. Uh, excuse me, folks, but the doctor's here. He can come right in, Mrs. Sims. I was just going. In just a moment, we will return for 
the concluding act of... Suspense. Now, here's Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Bergie, I think someone's looking for you. Oh, Mr. Bergen. Well, hello, <laughs> Effie Clinker. What's wrong? My car battery is run down. I think it's an acid condition. Oh, I see. Well, have you seen a serviceman? Well, I had a blind date with a sailor last night, but he got away. <laughs> no, I mean a mechanic. <laughs> Seeing you own a General Motors car, you should see your GM dealer for service. His mechanics are GM trained. They have specialized tools and factory-approved parts to provide your fine GM car with the GM care it deserves. So if you own a Chevrolet car or truck, a Pontiac, an Oldsmobile, Buick, Cadillac, or a GMC truck, you should make a date with a General Motors serviceman. Oh, that sounds exciting. Will he have blue eyes? <laughs> <laughs> You're dressed. What do you think you're doing? Oh, I feel so much better, Claire. I thought I'd like to sit out here with you. Clay's not back yet, is he? Well, he's probably on his way. You don't mind my being out here, do you? Mind? Uh, well, of course not. It's just that... Well, did the doctor say it'd be all right? Oh, yes. He said it might do me good. What else did he say about your memory? He says my only problem is to get over the shock of the accident. Did he say when that would be? He thought very soon. Hi, Mrs. Sims. How's my... Kendall, what are you doing out of bed? Well, the doctor said I could play. I feel ever so much better. Oh, great. Have you seen the uh, real estate man? Sure. Just came from there. Did he reduce his price? Hmm? Uh, no, no. He, uh, he wouldn't budge. I'm sorry, darling. I'm not the judge of character I thought I was. Still, it's a real steal. Almost, anyway. Well, what are you smiling for? Because I'm so grateful to you. Well, nonsense. I haven't done anything. Oh, you're wrong, darling. Without you, I couldn't have done any of this. What are you talking about? Game's up, Mrs. Sims. Or whatever your real name is. What? In words of one syllable... You've lost. <laughs> now, Clay, darling, or is it Mr. Sims? I'll take that 40000 that makes me such a pretty bulge in your jacket pocket. But, darling, I told you You've that I... You've told me so many things, haven't you? The 40000 please. Don't look at me. Oh, all right, my dear. As you guessed, I didn't actually turn the money over to the agent. I, uh... I thought if we waited until you were well enough to see him, you might be able to get a better price. You don't give up easily, do you? I beg your the pardon? The money. Here. You needn't bother counting it. It's all there. Oh, you don't mind if I run my fingers through it, do you? Who are you? How very discerning of you, dear Claire. You put your finger right on it. You... You mean she's not Endicott? That's exactly what she means, darling. I do have to be on my way, but why not tell you? Especially after all your hard work. My name is Taylor, Ruth Taylor. I'm Mrs. Endicott's private secretary. Convenient, huh? Oh, she's still in New York. I came on ahead. And by the time she arrives, I'll have recovered my memory... and I'll be horribly appalled at what I've done. But then, it wasn't really my fault, was it? Everyone told me I was Kendall Endicott. As for the money, I think I'll lose it. <laughs> the whole idea is perfectly dreadful, but Mrs. Endicott will understand. She trusts me. And 40000 doesn't mean so very much to her. You can't get away with it. But, Claire, dear, I already have. And you and that handsome impersonator can't do anything about it without implicating yourselves, can you? <laughs> Bye-bye. Thanks for everything. Hey, what about us? Don't we deserve at least a cut? You deserve what you're getting, a chance to clear out before my employer shows up. Or would you rather I call that nice Sergeant Hadley? Extortion is a serious offense, I imagine. And who can prove I didn't have amnesia and didn't just recover? <laughs> oh, please don't bother seeing me out. 
There goes 40 grand. Now stop moaning. We lost, period. Now let's get packed and get out of here. But it looked like such a perfect setup. It did, but it wasn't, so shut up about it. From now on, we stick to the horses. And stay broke, huh? It's better than the stretch in the pen. Now come on, let's move. Uh oh. It's not locked. Why, Sergeant Hadley, uh, this is a pleasant surprise. I doubt it. The girl, the car's gone. She take off? Not more than 30 seconds ago. You just missed her. Uh, has uh, something happened, Sergeant? <laughs> you still playing games, buddy? Give me Rizzo. Al Hadley. Just missed the girl. Put out an alarm. Pale blue Jaguar, um, Nevada license, uh, 25 KE. Yeah, yeah, I'll wait right here. Well... You almost got away with it, didn't you, Johnny? Who? John Edgar Bell. What's your real name, isn't it? And this is your wife, Miriam? Never mind us, that girl. She's not Kendall Yeah, save your breath. We know. The real one's flying in tonight. Let's get back to you two. How much did you take her for? Well, that's it. She took us. Uh, I mean, uh, she took the real Kendall Endicott. What? For 40000 I cashed the check and brought the money back to her, didn't I, Mir? That's the truth, Sergeant. Can't we make a deal with you? If you take us in, it'll only cost the county the expense of the trial and tie up a lot of your time. But if you let us go, we'll be out of town in an hour and you'll be rid of us for good. After all, Sergeant, we've never gotten in trouble before. And, well, can't we have a second chance? A chance to take somebody else? No, to stick to what we know, playing the horses. Hadley. Yeah, Al. What? Where? Oh, brother. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What happened? The Jaguar crashed through a retaining wall and ended up 500 feet down the canyon. Well, what about the girl? She's had her last accident. What about us? You're coming down to headquarters for a search. If you're clean, I'll give you an hour to be out of town. Oh, thanks. Save it, save it. I've seen grifters like you before. You'll try your luck again sometime, someplace. Just make sure it's a long, long way from here. Suspense. You've been listening to The Girl in the Powder Blue Jag, written for Suspense by Walter Black. Featured in tonight's story were Rita Lloyd, Jane Rose, and Bob Dryden. Listen again next week when we return with another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense.